Welcome back to the program. Now, the past 24 hours have been dominated by talk of New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet's 21st birthday get-up, which was revealed to have been a Nazi uniform. Offensive and stupid, yes, but the incident also gives us a chance to look at some deeper issues, anti-Semitism, hypocrisy, and when is a joke taken too far? Joining me now to discuss this is Dr. David Adler, president of the Australian Jewish Association. David, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I really appreciate that. And I want to ask you, first of all, as a representative of the Jewish community, what was your reaction to Dominic Perrottet's press conference yesterday and his subsequent apology? Yep. Um, thank you, James. Uh, look, he did a stupid thing when he was younger. There's no doubt about it. And he did a thing that was highly offensive to uh, the Jewish community. We have a lot of Holocaust survivors in Australia and descendants of Holocaust survivors. He was 21 years old. Uh, and young people occasionally do things that are quite stupid. And occasionally they do things that are, are offensive. Um, I can say unequivocally that Dom Perrottet's track record since he's been in politics uh, has shown zero signs of anti-Semitism. Uh, if anything, on a couple of issues, he's gone the extra mile to combat anti-Semitism. Don't forget, it wasn't all that long ago that New South Wales banned the swastika. Yep. And uh, we had bipartisan support in New South Wales, led by the Premier, for the adoption of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. So, is, with his track record being good, with it being so long ago, there is an important Jewish concept called teshuva. It means that if someone makes genuine repentance, then they earn forgiveness. Mm. So our reaction is that uh, he has earned forgiveness uh, and what happened 20 years ago has zero relevance to, to present issues in judging the performance of the Premier and his government. I think there's a really interesting point you make there about forgiveness in the Jewish religion. It's also a central tenet of the Christian religion and Correct. many other religions. And you know, it's so funny when we think about the kind of the new fake religion of wokeness that's out there, they will drag out what somebody did 20 years ago, but there's none of that concept of forgiveness. Isn't that right? A absolutely. I mean, we see uh, many examples of it. Uh, and, against uh, conservative politicians, uh, people that have said something that might have been a slip of the tongue uh, in, in the past. Um, you have a regular guest on Sky, uh, Catherine Deves, who has said one or two things that um, she has regretted and been vilified mm. relentl relentlessly for years. Uh, Donald Trump was in the same boat when uh, he wasn't the most diplomatic speaker <laughs> occasionally. Uh, that's one way to put it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but you're right. But I mean, there are some people though who are trying to, you know, not go down the forgiveness route. And I'm thinking here of a certain New South Wales former Premier mm -hmm. Bob Carr, who decided to weigh in on the Twitter bashing, and he said, "I learned Nazis were genocidal racists." This is what he tweeted today or yesterday through history at a state high school. Books from a mobile library and productions like Rise and Fall with a private school and heaps of privilege. How did young Perrette miss out? Verdict. This is Bob Carr speaking. Yeah, he is now. Unelectable. Now, isn't that a bit rich from a guy who has in the past lobbied the Labour Party to condemn Israel and back Palestine at its party conference? He, he has turned uh, to be one of the country's uh, most enthusiastic and vehement critics of Israel. Uh, occasionally, he's gone a step further. He's used terminology like Jewish lobby. Now, I'm certainly not accusing him of personal anti-Semitism, but when you support uh, boycotts of certain Israeli products, which he has, when you use terms like uh, Jewish lobby, these are terms occasionally used by anti-Semites. So um, Bob Carr, I think, has very little credibility on the issue at all. Mm -hmm. And I want to just finally, before I let you go, I want to just ask about this whole sort of question of Nazi uniforms. Now, God knows what was in Dom Perrottet's head when he did this. But, you know, I was thinking about how things like, for example, you know, The Producers, which was a Mel Brooks That's movie, right. you know, made by Mel Brooks, who's very famously very Jewish, um, Correct. poked fun at Hitler, um, you know, and, and the Nazis, um, you know, the, um, uh, what else would I think of? Um, 
Colonel Clink in um, Hogan's yeah. Hero, and then uh-huh. he was played by a Jew who who wanted to um, make fun of the Nazis. Where does the line fall on this? I mean, obviously, it's unacceptable to wear it at a fancy dress party, but is there ever some you know uses to actually take down Nazism that that's ever acceptable in art or humor or theater? Well, that's that's debatable, uh, and I'm, I must tell you when I first saw some of Mel Brooks' uh, character. Um, I, I found it very confronting. Mm-hmm. I, I found it offensive, but somehow I survived yep. uh, and continued to enjoy the comic genius of Mel Brooks. Um, I know the context is, is quite different, but I, I was contacted by someone today who went to a bad taste party wearing Taliban garb. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that they support the ideology or culture of the Taliban. Uh, it means they went to a party as a dress up. So I do think that um, while what Dom Perite did was a gross error of judgment, uh, it's not the most uh, dramatic political faux pas that we've had in this country. It's not the most damaging. Given his track record in politics, given his apology, I, I think it's time to move on, frankly. Indeed, indeed. And if it had come out, I guess, that when he was 21, he'd actually supported anti Semitic ideas, that would be different. a much different case. That's different. David Allen.